them a call, 772-247-3355, and they will connect you with the most reliable contractors on TreasureCoastElite.com. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jupiter, and Indian Town, Martin County's Heritage Station. It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Welcome back to the second half hour. We have a a really good informative half hour coming on, and I have two gentlemen that thank you both, first of all, for your service to our community, and it's so important to keep uh, our community safe, but beyond that, today in particular, we're going to be talking about our children. And I have right to the right of me uh, Chief Deputy John Budenseek, and uh, I do have your bio, so I'm going to read a little bit about that. Uh, Chief Deputy Budenseek is a career law enforcement officer who has served the citizens of Martin County for 25 years. He began his career at the Martin County Sheriff's Office in 1997 as a uniformed deputy on road patrol. Throughout his career, he served as a narcotics detective and on SWAT, starting as an entry team member and working through the ranks to become SWAT team commander. His career also includes working in every supervisory rank within the sheriff's office, supervising narcotics, marine, canine, aviation, and the Uniform Road Patrol Division. He currently oversees the departments at Martin County Sheriff's Office. Chief Budenseek is a graduate of Martin County Leadership Class 30. He has a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice from Columbia Southern University and has studied at IRSC and the University of Virginia. He is also a graduate of the FBI National Academy. The chief is a lifetime Martin County resident who lives in home sound with his wife and four children. And also, I'm going to let you tell us a little bit about your bio, uh, bio but we have sure. Detective Brian Broughton with us, and you're kind of the, the social media expert within the Sheriff's Department. Yes, so uh, I've been with the Sheriff's Office now for 31 years, uh, and the last 27 uh, I've been assigned to as a detective in the Special Victims Unit. And so within that unit, my goal and duties and responsibilities is to protect the children of Martin County. Uh, within that uh, task is uh, obviously what we're going to talk about today is the online exploitation and uh, abuse of children uh, through the internet. Yes. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I'm also a computer and cell phone forensic examiner. So when devices get seized uh, in cases, uh, they were brought to my uh forensic lab and we extract that information off those devices for court purposes Um, and I'm also a task force officer with the FBI I help them with uh, cell phone and computer forensics as well as child exploitation investigations. Well Detective Broughton I think it's really important for parents to understand and for children in particular to realize the information that is retained on phones. For example if you take photos or you're sending texts and delete them is that just gone? Uh, not typically. Uh, a lot of times just deleting something off of a device uh, just kind of removes it from the uh, what you actually see when you open up a phone or when you open up a computer, but it's actually still there until that uh, information is overwritten usually. And so forensically, uh, we can usually recover uh, text communications, we can recover pictures and stuff like that uh, on many, uh, many cases. And that's something so different from when all of us grew up and, you know, we didn't have cell phones. We weren't videoing each other at the parties we attended. So, you know, they're just stories now where children today and and for parents, we have to protect our children from this because, you know, we had an example with Hidden Oaks Middle School a little over a year ago. You know, it's just a moment in time of bad decisions. Right can stay with you forever. When I talk to kids uh, and I tell them, I said, look, my generation, your parents' generation, we all made mistakes and you're, and that's life. You're gonna make mistakes right. in life. The problem that the kids are having today that we didn't really experience when we were teenagers is that the problems that they're having today, they put on social media, they put on the internet. Mm-hmm. So it has this lasting effect. I call it the digital footprint. These kids don't realize the consequences of what they're posting and putting online today and how it affects you in your adult life, such as when you want to go to college and when you want to get that new job. Employers in colleges are looking at your social media footprint to see if you're the right candidate for that institution or that job. And that can be problematic many times with some of the stuff that's being posted out there. 
Truly, and especially as they get into high school and college and, the, you know, kids get a little riskier sure. behavior right. and have a little bit more, f- you know, pictures that are out there. Sure. Um, tell us, too, before we get into these 15 apps, which sure. are so important, what's your advice to kids and parents that are looking for the number of friends? Well, they have 50 followers. Right. I need 100, and right. then I need 200. Well, I know a lot of uh, teenagers like to be accepted. Uh, and one of that is a validation. Uh, I have 400 friends on my Instagram feed. I have, you know, 600 uh, Snapchat friends. Uh, And my uh, advice to young people is that, first of all, you don't know that many people, okay? So the majority of individuals that are looking at the information you're posting and the information you're sharing online are strangers. Uh, We've always grown up uh, with the adage of don't take candy from strangers, don't get in a car with strangers, but that never translates to digital media, and I think it needs to, and I think parents need to understand that, that this is probably worse than, uh, you know, the the CD guy in the rain slicker hanging out at the playground. You don't know who's on the other end of that uh, mouse uh, or that uh, camera online. And so I I think that is the issue that uh, people need to be aware of. So I advise teenagers that the people that you're sharing information with online, on your social media, should be people that you know in real life, your classmates, your friends and family, uh, and kind of block out those other individuals because you don't know who they are. And many of the cases we've had are because of that. They've allowed strangers into their uh, world and then those people start preying on and uh, affecting those kids in, in several ways. And uh, it's hard to get that back. And I'm sure both of you have seen cases where somebody poses as somebody else online. Absolutely. And they lure a young girl or what have you away. And, you know, it's, it, oh, many it's, times. it's a predator. It's, a it's predator. so easy now to pose as somebody. I, I go uh, online and our agency, uh, we have in, individuals that go online undercover as juveniles. Right. And believe it or not, I'm six, seven, uh, you know, over 50 years old. I'm a 13-year-old girl on the internet. They you know? don't know it. That's so right. if I can do that, That's you know, right. then obviously somebody out there to do bad purposes is obviously predators uh, are good yeah, at it. Absolutely. And just to touch on what he's talking about, this is every single day his unit can be working those cases yes. where people are on there trolling the internet, trying to get kids, trying to get photos of kids. This is an everyday problem for them. This is not just something that happens intermittently or every so once in a while. So you're saying, parents, don't look at the phone once a month and think everything's right. okay. This is something you need to be uh-huh. aware of 24-7. Um, Iggy, if you could put up the uh, photo of the 15 apps. Let's kind of go through some of these sure. apps, if you would, sure. and what parents need to be aware of. You said some of these have even changed since this graphic has been created. I think the big component and the common uh, denominator on all these ca- on all these apps, uh, the majority of them uh, give your child the ability to communicate with strangers. I think uh, that is the big number one, um, uh, I guess, common commonality in all these apps is that um, it gives your uh, it gives the predator the ability to come into your child's bedroom uh, at any time. Good way to put it. Twenty four mm-hmm. hours a day. Um, and so we could talk about, you know, danger, you know, stranger danger and all this stuff. But uh, like I said, once again, I, I want to uh, illustrate that it doesn't, you know, kind of translate to online stuff. And I think kids need to be more aware of that uh, and parents as well. Uh, some of the apps that are on here, uh, believe it or not, and I found it kind of hard to believe when I first started looking into this, is there's a lot of dating apps that teenagers are on. I'm like, why are teenagers on dating apps? Uh, there's a couple problems with this. Uh, is that all, all these dating apps, and there's a few on here that they mentioned, Badoo, Bumble, Meet Me, Scout, and Grindr, uh, is that they all use geolocation. So mm-hmm. like when you're on a dating app, you don't want to talk to somebody in Minnesota. You want to talk to somebody that's down the street or in the next county. Right. And so they use your GPS uh, on your phones. And so not only do these uh, people that you're communicating with on dating apps uh, you know, know a little bit about you and you can share pictures and communicate with them through these apps, is that they know your location, which is kind of scary. That's uh, very scary. And a lot of kids that have an alternative lifestyle or are confused about their sexuality will uh, go to these apps that are catering to that lifestyle, such as Grindr. It's a uh, it's a transgender and kind of a gay app. Uh, and if uh, they want to be around individuals that are more like their community, they're going to go to apps like this. And uh, once again, it just opens them up to the predators who may be out there to abuse or exploit a minor. 
Can you use these apps without the geolocation? So if a kid says, all right, I've got my location turned right. off, Mom. And then you would be talking to, you could still use them, but they would be talking to everyone. Okay. You know, so. It even opens uh, the net yeah. further. So that's the whole purpose of these dating apps is that you want to talk to somebody close to you. And that's the that's the danger. Which well, surprises all, me, too, that teens are using the dating apps. Exactly. Right. Don't you have enough people right. in, in, I know. In, in your classes and in your neighborhood? I mean, you when know? you're a teenager, you usually so. don't need the app then. Right. Right. <laughs> so right. At least we didn't back right. then, back in the day. And it's also kind of validation. You put your pictures out there, you know, the hot or not kind right. of thing. Or Tinder, you swipe left, swipe right. Right. I mean, you get kind of validation. Like, you put your pictures out there, people are commenting on them and stuff like that. So it's kind of, once again... Uh, these kids are looking for validation and, and, and like-minded individuals, and sometimes these individuals could be looking out to do harm. And that's the other thing, too, we didn't touch on yet, was just the bullying aspect with sure. social media. Um, the kids that are hot, the kids that aren't, the ones that are being right. bullied, you can't get away from bullying right. anymore. It used to be you were bullied at school, but you went home, and right. mom and dad, right. everybody loved you, and you could at least shut Absolutely. it off for a few hours. Absolutely. It's not like, like that. I tell kids that you know we had bullying when mm -hmm. I was uh, you know in school. That People picked you on, you on you for different things. You wore glasses. You had freckles. You right. had red hair. You were tall. You were fat. You were skinny. Um, that still goes on, but now that bullying doesn't just happen between eight and three. Uh, it follows you home, it reaches a much wider audience, uh, and uh, it's very uh, problematic for kids because it, it does follow them, uh, and it reaches a much wider audience. And, and uh, we've had, unfortunately, in my 31 years, we've had uh, a couple of young people that have taken their own lives because of the bullying aspect. Uh. And that just tears me up, knowing that a child has their whole life ahead of them. And just because, you know, uh, this crowd of bullies has uh, harassed them to the point where they thought they had nowhere else to turn. It's uh, it, it's sad. It is. It, it it tears you up. And I saw a post about that recently. It just tears you up, especially for a parent that's sure. left not realizing how distraught their child really was. Here's one that is in the news a lot, TikTok. Right. Sure. So TikTok obviously is, uh, it's, it's actually a fun app. It's actually like it's an app that I've seen and a lot of comedians and a lot of fun stuff is uh, posted on there. But basically you're taking short videos, there's lip sync kind of stuff going on, kids are dancing. The problems that I've seen, and we get a lot of reports uh, through the cyber tip line, uh, through the National Center for Missing Exploited Children. So social media can report uh, inappropriate activity on social media applications to law enforcement. And this is kind of their portal to do that. So we get uh, reports from them, and we've had several TikTok uh, complaints that have come through to our office. And the problem with that is, you know, parents are given a device, they don't really check it. TikTok they think is harmless. And we've had kids as young as six, seven, and eight years old dancing naked mm. and gyrating on TikTok. Oh my gosh. TikTok, of course, eventually finds it and reports it to law enforcement. But now this six or seven year old's, you know, new video there. is out there. Uh, and who knows who's seeing it. Uh, and, it and it's, you know, the fact that it, once it's out there, it's out there. And that's the problem I, I try to get to these kids is that prevention, I think, is the biggest um, thing that we can do with kids. Before you send that message, before you send that picture, uh, I always say, show it to your grandmother. Is, would she be, uh, you know, uh, embarrassed? Uh, by you sending that, well, I would never show that to my grandma, but then you probably shouldn't send it out. That's a really good point because you, especially a six or seven year old, they, they're really not equipped to make good decisions. So if it's not something you're comfortable in doing in front of your parents or grandma, it shouldn't be anywhere. Sure. It's a Absolutely. really, I, I like that, that narrative for them. Um, what about WhatsApp? So WhatsApp uh, is kind of similar to a, a bunch of other uh, communication apps. And Usually uh, a parent might think, well, I, I can look in uh, my child's phone, there's texting, and there's uh, the picture roll, and there's the texting app, and that's it. Well, kids aren't even using those. I, to be honest, they're not using the, the built-in texting app. They're using third-party applications that allow you to communicate. Uh, WhatsApp is uh, very popular in uh, a community where individuals have families outside the United States, uh, Venezuela, Mexico, uh, you know, and uh, a lot of that community is communicating uh, through WhatsApp because it uses your phone service and Wi-Fi uh, instead of, you know, having to call them up or something like that or using your minutes and, and stuff like that with your data plan. Okay. And so WhatsApp, but kids also use this application. And once again, if the parents don't know what they're looking for, if they don't know that there are third-party apps, Kick is another one that's on this list. Uh, and, and Snapchat, Snapchat right. is a big one. Snapchat, Instagram, they all have built-in features where you can communicate with other users and you can share pictures and videos and stuff like that. And if parents don't know what to look for, then uh, 
this could just, you know, be happening behind their backs and they, you know. So let's talk about that know. from the parent side right now because sure. that's a really tough thing. Like Snapchat, the the disappearing. They, they disappear. That's right. right. They, they're deleted after they converse. Sure. What do parents do other than you don't have Snapchat on your phone, sure, but the kids sure. are, everybody has Snapchat. Now. Sure. Uh, so here's the first thing I advise. Now, obviously, there are hundreds of Internet safety and child safety applications out there that you could download. I don't recommend a particular one, and the reason is uh, there's, you know, two worlds. There's a, a Apple world, and, you know, there's the Android world, the green bubble and the blue bubble, Great. right? Um, well, some of these applications work better with certain devices and uh, work better on other devices. Uh, and so there's not really a, an all-in-one type of uh, thing. But what I do recommend is to start something free, okay, because some of those apps, you know, cost money. Uh, built into both operating systems, either iOS or the Android, is parental controls. And so before you give a cell phone, particularly a smartphone, to a child, mm -hmm. Um, that you're eventually going to do because you want to keep t in touch with your child uh, is to set up parental controls. Um, and uh, I think in the iOS world, it's screen time and there's parental controls in that um, and set up a family device. And what that would allow you as a parent to do, be in control of that child's phone. And so if the child wants to download, let's say Snapchat, you get an alert on your phone that says, hey, your child wants to download Snapchat then you can have a conversation with your child. What do you use Snapchat for? Uh, why do you need this uh, application? Um, and so you can be in control of what applications your child is using. Uh, on Android, it's called Family Link. Uh, and once again, you just go into the settings, look for, you know, do a search for parental controls, and it kind of walks you right through that process. But once again, I think in the beginning, particularly with younger kids, you know, 12 and under, that you should, uh, as a parent, be the one in control of that device and what applications you approve as a parent to be on that device. Uh, and so, I mean, I've seen uh, several times where a parent will bring a child in with a phone and say, uh, you know, I think she's doing some things late at night. I want you to look at it. I was like, okay, it's got a passcode on the phone. What's the passcode? And the parents go, I don't know. You don't know the passcode to a phone of your 12 year old that you're paying for. I it's just found that that's, that's, yeah. that's unfathomable to me. And I, th I think parents have to realize that I'm sorry, children don't have the same privacy rights as an adult. Right. You just have to realize that. Put your foot down. Absolutely. And my daughter. You're a parent. You're not their friend. I get to see your phone whenever I want. Exactly. And they have to know that going into it. Because if they don't, then obviously you could take that phone away. Right. Um, and uh, and I, I do agree, though, as the kids get older, I, I think that uh, privacy should start coming into play. That's right. Uh, but once again, I think that uh, trust needs to be developed early on. Um, I know when I talk to kids, I said, you know, this has been going on for quite some time. Why didn't you report this activity to anyone? And they said, well, if I would have reported that to my parents, they would have taken away my phone. They would have taken away my social media. You get that. And I said, mm. I, I get that. As a parent, I get that. What I suggest, and when I get a chance to talk to parents, like I am now, is that take a deep breath. If your child comes to you with a concern that they experience something online, is that take a deep breath and go, thank you for coming to me. We're going to get to the bottom of this, okay? Don't just immediately take the phone away because that's their lifeline. That's how they communicate with their friends, and, uh, and that's a big part of their life. Uh, and so be thankful that they came to you. You know, open up that dialogue. So, you know, we talk about parental controls and this and that, but if you open up that dialogue, I think that's the better avenue to have that open conversation with your child and have it uh, on a repeated basis. It's a fine line that you have to really traverse as a parent. And I will say, like, during COVID, I was grateful for that social media because the kids were so separated. And they would sit there and all meet up on Google Chat. Sure, absolutely. And, you know, it, it gave them some socialization that they didn't right. have. So there's certainly benefits to it. Sure, but, absolutely. again, you have to... But you monitor. One of the questions I had, and, of course, my children have phones, is what about the parents who've already given a device to their children, right. how can they see what their, their kids actually have on their phone already? Right. And he can touch That's it. That's a you good can, question. Uh, sure. So uh, if you're concerned about what applications might be on your child's phone, well, obviously uh, going through it and you might see the icons and the name of them, but you can also go because a child can, knowing if the parents are going to look at it periodically, and let's say they have kick and they're communicating with some people on kick that they don't want you to know about. So before they come home, they'll delete the app. Um, and maybe when they leave from home and go to back to school, they'll redownload it again. 
Well, you can go into your uh, Apple Store, uh, the App uh, App Store, or the Google Play Store, and see the uh, device, uh, the applications that have been downloaded to that phone that are even uh, are been purchased and that are no longer even on that phone, but have been downloaded previously. So that's another way you can go in and look at those, uh, just to see what kind of activity, what kind of applications have been downloaded. Where can parents go though to look? Like I've never heard a kick. Right. I sure. wouldn't even know to look for. So it. here is a very common. Um, it's it's a great resource for parents. Uh, CommonSense.org is a website that, uh, first of all, it, it's a variety of different uh, educational points for parents and kids. Uh, but what it allows you to do, so it reviews books, it reviews movies, it reviews applications. Uh, so if you see an application, let's say you saw Bumble, you didn't know what Bumble was, you could go to this website, type in the word Bumble, and it'll tell you what Bumble is. Uh, so commonsense.org, it'll show you videos, walk you through uh, the dangers of TikTok and, and what TikTok is and how you can limit um, the people that are seeing your TikTok feed or your Snapchat feed, uh, you know, to go into the privacy settings and stuff. It walks you through that stuff. So it's a, it's a great website. Uh, a lot of my uh, videos that I use for my internet presentations are taken from this website. Uh, it's a great resource for parents. I know like books now are a big thing. Um, and uh, movies, yes, yes. Uh, ratings of movies, like is this movie okay for my child to go? She wants to go with her friends on a Friday night at the mall. Is this an okay movie? Well, they kind of talk about the nudity in it or the cursing in it and stuff like that. And so you as a parent kind of feel more comfortable knowing that what this movie or this book or this application is That's a is fantastic. About. Iggy, if you could put that in the comments, commonsense.org, so everybody can reference sure. that website. I had no idea that yep. existed out there. I know I'll be using there's it. There's other ones out there. You've got but a good that, kid, but you just don't know what to look with, for. Yes. Right, right. That's a fantastic. What other signs, are there signs that parents can be on the lookout for that maybe their kid is getting a little over their head with some of the social media apps? Well, obviously behavioral changes. Um, many times when I see uh, children that are being bullied, uh, what will happen is many times they'll start, uh, you know, being more sick. They don't want to go to school. Uh, you might see a group of friends that they usually hung around and no, now, now they're kind of alone or they're not hanging around with that group of friends anymore. You might see them get a text message and they're kind of like weary about looking at their phone uh, because kids are always on their phone and now they're not really going to their phone anymore. Uh, or maybe you're following them on social media and you don't see them posting anymore or something like that. Uh, these are these are times that you need to have conversations with your children and see if something is going on in their life. They're all tough times. I'll, I'll tell you what, they like you the, said, it's, it, it, for kids that get a little bit older, sure. uh, they are more independent, and it's going to be a little bit tougher uh, to be able to ferret out where they are with social media. Um, you mentioned something earlier, and I don't want to breeze over it. Sometimes you have parents come to you. Yes. So parents are able to come to the sheriff's office and say, Yes, I, and also uh, I'd like to reach out to the community. Uh, I teach uh, Internet safety to parents. Uh, we talk about some of the issues and some of the local cases that we have and what I'm seeing in uh, our schools. And uh, I'm also working with uh, several principals and we're getting this information out to kids as well. Kind of the sweet spot is middle middle age school mm -hmm. kids because they're starting to get into social media. Uh, their bodies are starting to grow, puberty starting to hit. And, you know, sometimes we have the uh, illicit images that are starting to be traded and stuff like that. So we want to, like I said, prevention is a big key here. Uh, before that picture gets sent out there. We want to talk to kids and, and reach out to them. So if there is a uh, Boy Scout group or a church group that wants me to come out and speak to the, uh, uh, you know, to the kids or to the parents and kind of give them a heads up and, and kind of a direction to go, uh, reach out to the sheriff's office. We, uh, we all, we're always willing to come out and uh, share the message. Well, Detective Broughton, I really appreciate you coming on today. This has been so incredibly informative, and I, I think it's so important, and it's something that every parent struggles with. So if you're out there struggling, don't worry. We're all in the same boat. Um, you know, uh, Chief Deputy Budenseek, there's a lot of things going sure. on. Last week there was the social media. It turned out to be a hoax, but, you know, it was a girl that put out that I'm going to shoot the school up. And, I mean, all of us, nobody knew what school it was. Nobody knew where it was originated from. What happens when these reports surface on your end? Well, real quick, let me thank the the, the uh, detective, Corporal, for being here. You asked yes. me to talk about this. That's yes. Greek to me. He's the, uh, he's the wizard on this. Definitely. So thank you for being here. You do a fabulous job. This ties our agency up really all week long. I think that started on Thursday night. You know, parents rightfully so were, were calling us over and over mm -hmm. and over again. 
So from our 911 system to our school resource officers to our detectives like Detective Broughton, we're out there trying to chase down all the leads, work with our sister agencies, trying to figure out, is this real? Do we need to upstaff for what particular school? And of course, they were taking the, the same image and personalizing it to different schools. So Martin County High School mm. was one of them, uh, Murray Middle School. It creates unnecessary panic across the board in homes, schools, in the sheriff's office, truly across the whole county. So we can't take any of this lightly. My concern is, is this turns into like a uh, the little boy that cried wolf. Mm-hmm. So we get used to this. This is white noise to us. And then when we get a real threat, we'll think there's nothing of it because there never is anything of it. So, you know, that that's a short answer to a really long, complicated question. It, it truly is. We only have a couple minutes left, but it's a, a frightening scenario it to is. think about. And you're absolutely right with the boy who cried wolf. So let me ask you a quick off topic from the social media sure. because it's the biggest thing. Um, the, the bridge is down. So have you heard anything more about that? They're going to be done on May 21st, and now the Confusion Corners are supposed to be closed, too, for, uh, I think it said 10 days, something like that. Yes, it's a perfect, terrible storm. We're going into the boating season. We're going into the Memorial Day weekend. They, right now, are saying that they are on point to get the job done on time. We are running a detail with Stewart Police Department, the Martin County Sheriff's Office and Stewart Police Department. We're out there during daytime hours running a detail with our marine vessels, warning boaters. You know, most of our, our boaters know, but it is it is ramping up to be a mess if they don't open that bridge up in a timely manner. Keeping in mind that Sandsprit Park is closed, or a portion right. of Sandsprit Park is closed. So between the park being closed and the boaters that live west of the bridge not being able to get out, there's a lot going on in the marine industry right now. There, there truly is always something going on in the, the county here. So, uh, again, Chief Deputy Budenseek, it's been a pleasure, and I'm, I'm so glad that you have Detective Broughton in. Sure. Um, this has been so incredibly important. We've got, we're just winding down the half hour here, but, um, you know, folks, if I, I found this on your Facebook page, but yes. we're... We had the, uh, it was uh, commonsecrets.org? Yeah, uh, commonsense.org. Commonsense.org. That'll cover a lot of these apps. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and like I said, even on this application here, some of the apps uh, like Live Me and Hot or Not are no longer available because this is always an, an ever changing field. So, parents, Technology. you got to keep up with it. Right. You got to keep it. up with it. Sure. It's always changing, and if there's a way yeah, to yeah. hide it, they certainly will. So, again, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you both here in the studio. Thank you for having me. Pleasure.